Mmm, a weird white spot on a banana is a sure sign you probably want to throw them away, as these are the nests of spiders. I'm talking about the Brazilian wandering spider, as it has no GPS. And this guy is dangerous, also known as the world's most venomous spider. One bite, and your nervous system is instantly blocked. As a nasty bonus, you get nausea and blurred vision. Don't worry, they're most likely to be found in South America. But since they like to hide, they can sneak into the banana box and travel wherever the bananas travel. They like to travel in their sack, and there is evidence of a mama spider traveling together with her baby spiders. Oh, goody. Ever eaten canned food? Chances are, you've hoovered up some maggots, too. Those critters can be found in all types of food. Canned tomatoes? Sure thing. Canned mushrooms? Absolutely. Maggots are crazy about those. They love it so much that 20 maggots are good to go for 3.5 ounces of drained mushrooms. Sorry, pal. There's nothing we can do. Just accept it. Some creepy things in your food may actually be approved by the FDA. As weird as it may sound, the FDA is okay with 30 or more insect parts per chocolate bar. Want to know more? Okay, how about rodent hair in your peanut butter? Mmm, yummy! Despite the fact that peanut butter is one of the best controlled by FDA products out there, they don't see anything bad in a couple of rodent hairs per jar. Now, let's check your intuition. Question 1. How much mold is acceptable in apple butter, according to the FDA? Mm, Not that much, actually. 12% mold is acceptable. Question 2. How much mold is okay for cherry jam? Eh, Things are getting stinkier, as 30% mold is okay for cherry jam. The last one? What about black currant jam? Ready? 75% moldy black currant jam is FDA approved. I don't think I'm going to eat peanut butter with black currant jam ever again. Broccoli is both good for health and risky at the same time. It's not that you shouldn't touch broccoli, but it's a rather friendly reminder to check your veggies. What if there might be a dangerous insect lurking inside your broccoli? Let's say, the black widow spider. Their bite is not as bad as the Brazilian wandering spider's bite, but it's still not good. It's a true story. A guy from Ohio did find such a spider in broccoli. Luckily, the story has a happy ending. The person who found it called the local animal sanctuary, and the Ohio Another Chance Sanctuary adopted the spider and gave it a really cute name. (laughs) Broccoli. Hey, wait a minute. We're adopting spiders now? Ho ho ho! Christmas is soon, and you opt for a live Christmas tree. Before dragging that tree right to your place, you better inspect it thoroughly. See that walnut-sized, pinecone-shaped object hanging on your tree? Bad news! This is someone's dormitory. It's an egg sack holding hundreds of little mantises waiting to hatch in your home and celebrate the holidays together. So, unless you want to share your bed with them, make sure all the surprises are under the Christmas tree, not on it. Right, you don't want to risk and opt for the fake Christmas tree. Good choice! Thing is, fake trees are three times less likely to catch fire than live ones. But it doesn't mean it's totally safe. You have to be careful either way. Use appropriate lighting and never place the fake tree too close to the heat source. Flame-resistant models are the best. All right, nearsighted people, beware. If you ever see something that looks either like an Oreo cookie or an ancient coin with a quaint design, you better put on your glasses before touching it. You know, this might be a terrifying spider. What, again? Yeah. I'm talking about the Chinese hourglass spider. And I honestly have no idea why they call it the hourglass spider and not the cookie spider. These guys live in Southeast Asia, Mexico, and Guatemala. And it seems like it doesn't really care that much about cold since it can even chill in some parts of the United States and Canada. These spiders are notorious for setting up traps. They build burrows, and once they detect motion, bam, they pounce. Also, those burrows help them keep unwanted visitors, such as wasps, at bay. Good news? We humans are way too large for them to drag us into their dungeons. And despite many viral posts, they're not poisonous to us. What time is it? 
Ah, it's time to debunk another myth. Now, some time ago, there was a viral TikTok video with strawberries soaked in salt water. The video looked pretty gross because of worm-like bugs crawling from the strawberry. But this one is sort of a myth that all the strawberries are swarming with larvae. First off, they all get checked and soaked before shipping. Moreover, there are fruit flies, which are quite different. Thing is, if the berries wait on the counter to be bought for too long, they start attracting fruit flies, which lay teeny tiny eggs, which then turn into larvae, which then turn into new fruit flies. The key point here is that these fruit flies are everywhere. Supermarkets, smaller stores, and even in your kitchen. And yeah, you're pretty much likely to eat them each time you munch on pretty much any berries. You say gross, I say natural protein. Eh, just kidding. Don't worry, plant larvae aren't dangerous for people. Also, you don't need to soak your berries in salt water. A thorough rinse will do. Now, it's best to avoid some fruits if they're underripe. Lychee is a good example here. Despite their innocent appearance, they can be pretty dangerous. If you eat them before they're ripe, you're likely to consume some toxins too. It's not as bad as you can imagine, but this toxin can significantly lower your blood sugar. For people with certain conditions, it may lead to unwanted consequences, including fever and even worse. So, nothing extraordinary here, just make sure your lychees are ripe. Now, you might think that black sooty spots on your apple are a true sign the fruit isn't edible, but it's not quite true. First off, those sooty spots are nothing but a cosmetic issue, even though it's a fungus. But don't worry, it's not dangerous or something. Option 1. Scrub those spots off and munch on your apple. Option 2. Peel the apple and munch on it. Option 3, where you throw the apple away, doesn't exist. Now, beware if the salmon you're about to buy has caviar. It might be a sign this fish is not going to be as yummy as you want. Salmon from the Pacific Ocean tend to lay eggs in freshwater, so they have to migrate when they do that. But once the salmon is in freshwater, all its systems kind of stop working and the fish stops eating. Such salmon is still edible, but the quality is way poorer than it could be. And what if you see a white capsule on your kale, which is supposedly a cocoon? Hey, no need to throw your dinner away. You can simply remove this aspiring butterfly or fly, give that kale a fine rinse, and enjoy your salad. Oh, almost forgot? Be careful with pre-packaged salads. Even though the manufacturers claim they're safe to eat without washing, there is evidence of people getting health conditions because of unwashed pre-packaged salads. Those salads landed them with hefty medicine bills to get rid of the consequences. Imagine you suddenly notice a fly in your drink. Is it doing the backstroke? Will you finish the glass or pour another one? Well, it depends on the gender of the fly. If you've got a female fly in your drink, a couple of minutes later, the taste will get funky. If a male fly wants to take a bath in your glass, it won't ruin the drink. Thing is, the female flies have certain pheromones that are in charge of that funky smell. Even if you fish the fly out instantly, the drink can still lose its original taste, as even one nanogram of pheromone is enough. But since you probably won't be able to tell the fly's gender, you probably want to pour a new glass. Yeah, a fly in your stomach won't do anything bad to you, but it's sort of gross. And what about that extra hole in the upper part of the sink? It has a name and everything. The overflow hole. And it's designed to keep the sink from flooding. So, in case someone forgets and keeps the faucet going for too long, or the sink gets clogged and water can't drain down from the main drain hole, the overflow hole comes in to save the day. Let's say it buys you a little time before you have the entire bathroom floor flooded. Have you ever noticed how satisfying closing the door of a car can be? Car manufacturers devote a great deal of time to designing these sounds. Studies have shown that they create a perceived sense of quality in the buyer. It all begins with the primary material. While older cars used to be made with heavier materials, car doors nowadays are produced with lighter tin, which can make a rather unpleasant metallic sound once you shut them closed. So car companies employ sound engineers to ensure that there is the exact amount of foam, mats, and tin in a car's composition to make the most comforting sound possible. And what about those tiny dots on the top of your car's front window? 
The pattern of these little black dots minimizes distractions for your eyes. This black part, also known as frit, normally gets warmer than the clear parts, which prevents the windshield from deforming. And no, the tab under your rearview mirror is not made only for the purpose of hanging fluffy dice or aromatic-pleasing air fresheners. It's actually a switch that allows you to adjust the position of the mirror depending on the time of day. Flip it one way, and it's the daytime driving mode. Flip the other, and you're ready to drive safely during nighttime as it tones down the glare coming from headlights of the cars behind you. Next time you head out to the supermarket, make sure to keep this in mind. In case you don't have a coin to unlock these shopping carts, there is a well-kept secret that can help you out. If you have your house keys on you, check for a rounded key head. If you happen to find one, try using it to unlock the cart. It should fit perfectly in there, replacing the need to carry coins around. Because if we're being honest, who still has them? Elevators. If you want to ride them on your terms and your terms only, make sure to try something out. Most elevators have a secret button combination you can use to skip all the other selected floors and go directly to the one of your choosing. This might work out, especially on those days when you press 13, but you wanted to press 33. On most elevators, this works once you simultaneously press the closed door button together with your floor number. This should help you get to your floor without stopping. Some elevators require you to double-press the selected floor numbers, as double-pressing will often cancel the previously made request, while other elevators require you to hold the open door button and then double-press the buttons of the floors you'd like to cancel. Now, to stay out of trouble, it's best not to cancel the floors of the other people in the elevator. They won't take it kindly. Also keep in mind that there are elevators that might not have this function. Now, for honey lovers out there, go ahead and raise your hand. If your pot of golden honey is crystallized, know that it is actually a good sign. Crystallized honey means that it hasn't been pasteurized, which means better product quality. With a decrease in temperature, the natural ingredient of honey, also known as glucose, will make it crystallize. Now, try making the best of it. To add some texture to your oatmeal or toast, add a layer of crystallized honey and enjoy nature's sugar. And if you don't like crystallized honey, plop it in the microwave for a minute or two. Ah, winter and fall. You know what this means, right? Sweater weather. But there's nothing more annoying than wearing your beautiful wool sweater and itching yourself all the way through it. Actually, I can be more annoying than that, but let's talk about itchy sweaters. To keep this from happening again, here's the secret. Turn your sweater inside out and soak it in cold water. Add 2 or 3 tablespoons of vinegar and let it sit for a while. Then, drain the water. Now, while the sweater is still wet, massage a generous amount of hair conditioner into the fibers of the wool. After letting it soak in the hair conditioner for about 30 minutes, gently press the excess water out of the wool and leave it to dry flat on a towel. There you go! No more itchy sweater! Any fast food restaurant you go to will hand out small paper cups for customers to fill with their ketchup, mustard, or barbecue sauce. But if you're eating some chicken nuggets or trying to dip your burger into the cup, there's always that bit of sauce that seems impossible to reach. Next time, try unfolding the cup. It'll turn into a small paper plate, and this way you'll get all the ketchup you poured in the first place. Padlocks used in outdoor environments should be cleaned and lubricated every three months. Regular lubrication will help prevent padlocks from freezing in cold weather conditions. Look for the tiny hole on the bottom of the lock. Then pour oil into it, and there you go! It opens again. One thing we often neglect is a point in an ointment cap. These pointy surfaces were designed to help us break the tinfoil protection of the ointment tube. You just turn the cap over and break the ointment seal with its own cap, and there you go. Vacuums come with so many attachments, but do any of us really know what that one with long bristles is for? It's for dusting and is perfect for cleaning framed art, blinds, and lampshades. What's the difference between a wooden hanger and a plastic one? Aside from helping keep your clothes in shape, cedar wood hangers also repel moths and bugs. Salt isn't just used for cooking, it can get rid of tough smells. Rubbing salt on your fingertips after chopping garlic should remove the smell. It also works on shoes. Toasters have a secret slide in the bottom that can be removed 
so you can clean out all those annoying breadcrumbs. If you ever had problems with popping chocolates from the box, look at those little holes around them. They're there to help you. If you push a hole right next to the candy, it'll jump out easily. When you take a sip from a coffee cup with a lid, it decreases air pressure inside the cup, so air tries to get in. The tiny hole on the lid allows air to enter that way, so liquid can smoothly pour out the main hole. More on beverage lids. The small button on them let restaurant workers, and customers too, understand what's in a cup. Near each button, there's a name. Just look at which one is pushed down. The numbers on the fruit stickers tell you how exactly they were grown. If there are four digits and the first is four or three, the fruit has been sprayed with pesticides. If there are five digits and the first is nine, the fruit has been grown organically. If there are five digits and the first is eight, the fruit has been genetically modified. When you're on your way back to the car after bagging up everything you bought, use loops on a shopping cart to hang the bags. Now, softer items like bread, eggs, fruit, and veggies won't get squashed by the heavier goods. If you don't have anyone to hold the other end of your tape measure when you try to measure something, tap a nail on it. Now, simply hook your tape on it using the tiny hole all tape measures have. The square-shaped spoon that goes with a McFlurry helps to mix the ice cream toppings through the dessert. The spoon hooks directly to a machine and spins around. Padlocks that are used outside quickly get out of order because of rain. See this little hole in the bottom? It's made for pouring engine oil inside. Do this and the key will again turn in the lock without any difficulty. You keep banging the bottom of a glass ketchup jar, but nothing's coming out. Here's a little tip. Turn your ketchup bottle at an angle and tap on the middle of the neck. In many fast food restaurants, customers fill tiny folded paper cups to get a portion of ketchup or mustard. Here's the news. The cups are supposed to unfold and turn into small paper platters to hold a great deal more sauce. That little hole on the handle of a pot or a frying pan isn't just for hanging them on the wall. During cooking, put the end of your utensil in the hole, and it'll be propped over the pot to save your kitchen from extra mess. The blue or any other dark color bristles on your toothbrush are meant to remind you when it's time to get a new one. If you see that bristles have become pale, change the toothbrush or its head. An extra hole at the upper part of the sink has multiple hidden functions. First, in case someone forgets to close the tap, the water won't overflow and the bathroom won't get flooded. Second, thanks to that hole, the water drains faster as it gives an escape for the air, helping the water flow down. Most metallic zippers have a hidden lock inside them to save you from awkward situations, such as an undone fly. Don't leave the zipper handle in an upward position. When you pull it downwards, it automatically locks. It's all thanks to those tiny grooves hidden underneath the handle. Spoiled milk emits gases, like most foods when they go off. A classic plastic milk jug has a concave shape on one side. So when the gases expand inside the jug, it expands too, and the concave shape curves out. Also, if you want to save some milk for later and freeze it, the jug will expand when the milk gets solid as well, occupying more space in a jug. Bath foam isn't only for fun or a nice smell. It also helps regulate the temperature. The bubbles keep the water hot, so you can enjoy a bath a bit longer. Anyway, it works for acrylic bathtubs only. Those made of metal lose heat really fast either way. Many cups and mugs have little grooves on the bottom on purpose. They're designed for washing machines. The grooves let the water flow and not spill over your feet when you take the cup out. Also, those grooves let the air flow so the cup doesn't crack even if the tea is scalding. Bumper stickers on your car give away way more information than you think. That custom sticker you made with your dog might show robbers that you're pretty outdoorsy and like to spend a lot of time away from your house or your car, leaving them exposed. Or that you have enough funds to buy a really expensive dog breed. 
the fact that you have a sticker saying that you have a kid on board could translate to, I'm easily distracted and always have my hands full. It's really easy to steal my car. Those stickers that you bring from vacation and place on your car also show that you might be away for a couple of months at a time or that you like to travel long distances. If you're proud of your family's activities, don't use bumper stickers to show it. It might lure unwanted people and give them unnecessary information, like the name of the college you go to or where you like to play golf. It's the same if you're part of a certain profession. Thieves can easily assume how many valuables they can find in your car by the amount of money they presume you make. Parking decals can even show where you work or live, which is something you should never share with strangers. The more your car is personalized, the more you'll be remembered. It's not always a bad thing, but if you ever offend someone in traffic, they'll be more inclined to report you to authorities if you have a custom license plate, a quirky color on your car, or a lot of stickers. If you don't intend to keep your car forever, you should consider what it would be like before selling it. A lot of bumper stickers on a car can steer buyers away. Not to mention, it's a real hassle to remove those decals, since they leave a lot of sticky residues behind. They can also damage the car's paint layer. However, one sticker that can keep thieves away is one suggesting that you have an alarm or a tracking system set up in your car. You should never keep electronics in your car for longer periods of time. Firstly, they can attract unwanted attention from people looking for easy money. Not to mention leaving your phone or charger at extreme temperatures can damage them permanently. The fact that you use sunscreen every day is really praiseworthy. Just remember not to leave the bottle in the car. Leaving sunscreen exposed to the sun can reduce its effects since overheating causes the chemicals to deactivate. Specialists recommend that sunscreen be stored at temperatures below 77 degrees Fahrenheit. You should even keep those driving glasses of yours away from direct sunlight. Make sure you place them in your glove box or take them with you when exiting the vehicle. Exposure to direct sunlight can damage the lenses and the plastic or metal frame, damaging their fit and efficiency against sun rays. If you've ever bought hairspray, spray paint, or deodorant, you've probably noticed that all these cans have storage temperature recommendations printed on them. That's why you should never leave them exposed to extreme temperatures in your car. These bottles can rapidly expand and explode, not to mention their contents can be highly flammable. Try not to leave a plastic water bottle in your car either. If it's been sitting in the heat, you could end up consuming harmful substances like BPA, a chemical compound used in manufacturing various types of plastics. They can transfer from the plastic into the water after some time. That's why even bottled water has an expiration date on it. It's not like water can expire. It's written there so you know the date up until the water is safe to consume, safe from the chemicals in the plastic. More so, a water bottle left on the seat of a car in direct sunlight can act as a magnifying glass for the sun's rays and become flammable. If you want to make sure your groceries are safe to consume, never leave them out at an unsafe temperature. Whenever you have to buy perishable groceries, leave them in temperatures above 40 degrees Fahrenheit for no longer than two hours or just one hour before the temperature is above 90 degrees Fahrenheit. Best if you can buy meats or dairy last from your grocery list. That way, you get home faster and rapidly store them in your fridge. Even in the cold season, you should never leave beverages unattended in your car. Water, juice, or soda can expand in their containers if frozen and cause a huge mess. I know it's way more comfortable to throw your damp clothes in a bag after leaving the sauna or the swimming pool. Just make sure not to leave them for way too long in your car. Those clothes can easily gather mold or bacteria that can get stuck inside tiny places in your car. Not to mention, you won't be able to wear them ever again. Hang them up to dry as soon as you get home to avoid damaging them. Hey, having fresh breath is something that I always worry about too, especially when I'm on the road. But I always skip the usual pack of gum, since it can become gooey and stick to the things in my car, especially when left in the scorching heat. It's not so good in the winter either, since it can become frozen solid, making it flavorless and dangerous to your pearly whites best to opt for gumdrops if you really need to keep something minty in your car. Your handbag is one of those things you should never leave unattended in your car either. We often store valuables in our bags, like the keys to our houses or our wallets, so it's best to make sure that you never leave them in your car to potentially attract thieves. If you need to leave it there, place it in the trunk. It's less visible for most cars. 
your car shouldn't be a safe place for your important documents. Either shred or mail them as soon as you can. If your car were to be broken into, your contracts or tax forms might expose vulnerable information about your life. Most people leave documents facing up on their passenger seat, which makes them even more readable for curious people. Wax crayons are useful during long trips to keep youngsters entertained, but it's safer to remove them from the car or place them in an airtight box as soon as you arrive at the destination. These art supplies melt easily and can stain your car seats. Always plan your trip in advance if you intend to buy house plants. If you know you won't be heading home straight after, make sure you purchase sturdy plants. Even mild temperatures of 45 degrees Fahrenheit to 50 degrees Fahrenheit can wilt away delicate plants within the hour. More so, if its leaves touch the windows, the cold glass might ruin the foliage. Even if it's a bigger plant, don't transport it in the trunk or let them stick out the window. And if it's really cold outside, make sure you warm up your vehicle before placing the plants in. Always make sure to drive with your shoes on, no matter how short the distance is or how hot it is outside. You might have to brake rapidly and find yourself unable to apply enough force with a bare foot. More so, if there's an emergency and you need to step out of the car, you might hurt your feet or waste time putting your shoes back on. If you like to travel with your bike or your scooter attached to your vehicle, you need to take special care of those pneumatic tires, those that are air-filled and need a pump to inflate. They're also on the list of things not to leave in the car on a sunny day. That's because the extreme heat can cause the air inside the tires to expand, at times even resulting in a blowout. Those high temperatures can also weaken the rubber, making you more exposed to a flat tire. Airbnb's logo isn't a bent paperclip, as it may seem to be. Bellow, as it's called, for belonging, means more than that. There's a person's head, the location symbol, and a heart for love. All joined together, they make Airbnb's iconic A and symbol of togetherness. E120, or Natural Red 4 Food Coloring, aka Carmine, is made from tiny beetles. It's been used to color anything from cakes to candy to even drinks. The shine on candy also comes from bugs. This time, it's the Indian female lac bug. The beetle leaves behind a substance that is scraped from the trees to be formed into dry shellac that gives that glossy look. The Mozilla Firefox logo isn't a fox at all surrounding the planet. It's a red panda instead. The name Firefox is the English translation of its Chinese name. Those maintenance covers in the street are round for safety reasons. In past civilizations, like ancient Rome, manholes, that's what they were called back then, were square-shaped slabs of stone. Unfortunately, these were prone to accidents. If they weren't placed properly, a square cover could slip through the square hole diagonally. Ow! Placing a round cover eliminated this problem. A circle cover won't slip inside because there are no angles. A tomato isn't technically a vegetable, but a fruit. Banana trees aren't related to palm trees or trees at all. They're herbs. Banana is considered an herb because it never builds a woody trunk the way a tree does. Instead, it forms a succulent stalk, like lemongrass or its cousin, ginger. You can call them berries as well. The Golden Gate Bridge color wasn't meant to be the orangey-red that it is today. The bridge's original color was suggested to be many other colors, such as black with yellow stripes or even candy cane to make it visible for passing ships and aircraft, especially in the frequent San Francisco fog. But when the steel arrived covered in an orange primer to protect it from rust, the architect preferred the international orange color, and it stuck. Those legs on the back of keyboards aren't an ergonomic design to help your wrists sit better. Using the legs out for too long can tire and hurt your wrists, plus slowing your typing down. The hinge legs are just there to help you see the letters and numbers better if you don't know how to touch type. The color of a chili pepper reveals nothing about its taste or heat. The smaller a chili is, the hotter it'll usually be. The heat doesn't come from the seeds, as believed, but the white membranes that hold them. Hidden within the Toblerone logo of the mountain is the image of a bear standing on its hind legs about to eat that yodeler over there. No, not really. 
This is because bears are a big part of Bern, one of the biggest cities in Switzerland where the founder created the Triangle Chocolate Tree. Toblerone is also a play on the founder's family name, Tobler, and the Italian word Torone for honey and almond nougat. The space below a cup of noodles is there to protect the noodles during transport. This technique is called a middle suspension. Not only are they protected better in their styrofoam cup, but it also helps those noodles soften more evenly and quickly. Now, even though you might have thought that the hole in the barrel of a ballpoint pen had no purpose, it does. It's called a venting system, which helps the ink flow more smoothly. This way, an even amount of air pressure is created inside and outside the pen, allowing the ink to flow into the point easily. One of the most recognized logos in the cycling world has a hidden item in its famous logo. Inside the Tour de France name, a cyclist hides in the O, U, and R. Those metal brackets on the top of the nozzles in gas stations have a unique design put into place in case of accidents. If a dodo accidentally forgets the nozzle is still inside the gas tank and starts driving away, the magnetic brackets separate without damaging any part of the gas pump. Wendy's logo is designed off of the daughter of creator Dave Thomas. It's also named after her nickname, but there is more to the logo than that. Wendy's collar spells out the word mom. While unintentional, it became something to mean a homey feel more than any other restaurant out there. Finding the right lane to be in while driving for your exit can sometimes be confusing, especially in a foreign country. Pay attention to the side of the road that exit signs are located. It'll be the lane you need to be in. Some toothpaste has a little seal on them that needs to be removed before you can use them. Instead of peeling back the foil layer, the toothpaste lid has a little spike on the top just for this reason. Tostitos have a secret symbol hidden right in the middle of their name. The two T's in the middle of the logo resemble two people enjoying Tostitos over a bowl of salsa. The salsa bowl is in red and forms the dot in the eye. One of the most recognizable figures in the world, the Statue of Liberty, for 16 years, functioned as a fully operational lighthouse. However, the light was barely visible, even from Manhattan. In 1901, it was eventually decommissioned as a lighthouse. Tourists could even visit the torch for a stunning view of the city. But an accident damaged the Statue of Liberty's torch in 1916, and it's been closed to the public ever since. The do not remove under penalty of law tag on mattresses isn't put there for the consumer or void your warranty either if you do remove them. In the 1900s, manufacturers used to create the filling with basically anything. Animal hair, old hospital beds, or clothing. It didn't matter at the time. Strict laws created the tags to stop recycled materials from being used and sold as new. Good thing! Toyota's symbol is more than just some random rings combined. The three overlapping ovals symbolize the merge of the hearts of consumers and Toyota together. A California sushi roll is made of seaweed, rice, cucumber, avocado, and crab meat. But it's not crab meat at all. Surimi is an imitation crab meat. It's made of white fish blended with sugar instead of crustaceans. The fish mixture is then heated and pressed into shape. Oops, another burglary in the U.S. has just occurred. Wait another 22.6 seconds and there will be another one. Hey, no need to worry about your property. Forewarned, forearmed. Let's explore a few tips on how to protect your house. A mere sticker can contribute a lot to your house's safety. For instance, you can use a sticker that says you have a home security system even if, in reality, you don't. It may not sound convincing enough, but still, burglars prefer not to mess with such houses. Just one more tip here. Make sure the sticker looks true to life, so a makeshift sign won't do. It's better to fork out some money and grab a real-looking sticker. Another smart trick is to leave a pair of really large shoes on the porch so that the burglars could clearly see them. It will make them think someone big and dangerous lives there, and they won't fancy meeting them. Right, now let's inspect your door. I hope you don't leave the keys under the doormat. 
The only things you can leave under the mat are the cookies or chips. This is a fun way to see if someone was visiting you while you were away. However, the trick doesn't give you a 100% guarantee. It might be a mailman, a delivery guy who got the wrong door, or even a random dog hanging around your porch. Yeah, cookies feel better in your stomach, not under the doormat. Okay, you're back home from work. It was a tough day and you're tired. You leave the keys in the keyhole and completely forget about it. Right, the main thing is that you've locked the door and the keys are inside. But who said there is no burglar in the bushes targeting your house? Technically, it might be impossible to insert a dupe and get in if there's a key in the keyhole. But these guys are well equipped and have a whole assortment of hooks to lure the key out. You know what happens next? They can seep into your house as silently as ninjas and grab all your valuables while you're peacefully sleeping. A lock that can only be closed from the inside and can't be opened from the outside seems like a good solution. When moving to a new place, even if you didn't buy it but rent it, make sure to change the locks. Who knows how many copies of those keys there are? As for renting, you never know who lived there before you moved in. Also, if for some reason you accidentally left your keys in the front door for some time, the best thing to do is to change the lock. Yeah, probably nothing bad will happen, but still, it's better to play it safe. Plus, not only should you stop leaving the keys in the door, but you also shouldn't leave them on display. Maybe it's better to bring the keys to the living room instead of keeping them near the front door. Sometimes, burglars can use not only your door, but your window too. Mind your trash, especially if you throw away some pricey stuff packaging. Don't let the thieves know what you purchased and how much you paid for it. Also, your trash may contain some essential information about your personal data, credit card details, and so much more. Keep an eye on your mailbox. Make sure you have a lock on it. Thing is, burglars may be quite interested in your mail contents, so the secret is simple. Keep the mailbox locked and make sure you shred any personal data related papers. Now let's inspect your front lawn. Hey, I can see something compromising. I'm talking about these large bushes. Yeah, I know you don't have time to trim them. The larger they get, the more space there is for the burglars to hide. Plus, if someone sees untrimmed shrubs and trees in the front yard, they might think nobody's home. You see the point, right? Okay, let's say you ignored all the previous tips and burglars broke into your house. The most interesting thing for them is surely cash. If you don't have any cash at home, you can skip this tip. But if you have valuables, get creative. Cash can be stuffed into a plastic bag and hidden in a large container with some leftovers. Also, you can place that plastic bag into an old detergent bottle you keep in the storeroom or the kitchen. Burglars aren't likely to look for your stash there. A couple of don'ts here. Hiding cash or jewels in a prescription pills container isn't that smart. And yeah, a freezer isn't the best option either. Many burglars like to check it in the first place. Time to see if you keep your keys right. If you keep your car and house keys together, you might want to reconsider it. First off, imagine you lose them and burglars somehow know where you live. Not only will they grab what they want, but they'll also have a vehicle to transport all your hard-earned belongings. Keep an eye on your garage keys, especially if it's possible to sneak into your house through your garage. Even if it isn't, who said there are no valuables in the garage? However, there are no limits whatsoever for burglars. They can sneak into houses even through small windows. The reason why they prefer doors is that it's the safest way. While squeezing through the window can get scratches, and it's not that they don't want to spoil their looks. The thing is, if they leave their DNA, they can be traced. However, crooks are careful about not leaving their traces. For instance, a report from England claims only about 3% of burglars leave forensic evidence. To protect yourself at night, there are several options. Number one, insert a large paper clip or a bobby pin inside the keyhole. You can use a spare pair of keys if you have them. 
This way, you'll make it extremely hard, if not impossible, for the burglars to use the key dupes. Number two, barricading is an option. It can be a heavy chair, a bookshelf, you name it. I mean, why not if it makes you feel safe? If your door opens outwardly, a jammer could do a great job for you. A chair can be super handy. Secure it under the doorknob. It's not the most powerful security system, but at least it does its job. Binding the doorknobs or handles together can be an option too. A dummy security camera can protect you during the day and night. Again, burglars are not as fearless as they may seem. If you have a real CCTV, make sure the crooks don't deactivate it. So place it in some hard to get place. Let's crack a burglar's code. Tape on the door handle or a slice of cheese on the car's hood and many more can be signs that you're being watched by a crook. Burglars don't just pick a house randomly and rob it. They'll often monitor the home before they take action. They want to know more about the house and its security. They leave markings on the home, garage door, post box, or storage unit. Get to know these markings and know what they symbolize and you'll be able to better protect your home from the bad guys. If you see a circle drawn, that means in the eyes of the thieves, your house is a piece of cake to rob. Maybe it has no home security system set up. Yet, a barred circle means to avoid entry. Maybe the home has high-tech alarms, CCTV cameras, or a dog. Ladder-like lines means there are valuables visible in the home, so there are items in the house worth stealing. If someone sprays the letter M in the garbage, that means empty in the morning, and N refers to empty at night. Police forces have issued warnings about the code, but keep in mind that some of these signs are actually harmless messages used by road workers to communicate about pipelines and so on. If you see some evidence of key bumping, don't enter the house. Key bumping is a technique where burglars use a similar key made with a heavier metal than the pins to file down the pins on the inside of the lock. Plus, victims may encounter some problems while claiming insurance in such cases because this technique may leave no sign of forced entry on the outside of the lock. You're being robbed and you can't prove it to the insurance company. Sounds like a nightmare. Lock picking is a less forceful technique. This one will leave marks on the doorknob, such as light scratches around the lock, but the real signs will be found on the inside of the lock on the pins. They'll have dents. Heavy scrapes or marks on your doorknob can also indicate that someone has entered your home. Thieves sometimes use screwdrivers to break the pins in the lock. If you see deep scratches, marks, or a widening of the keyhole, be careful when you get inside. Thieves may stick a tape, and it's usually a see-through one on the door handle. Suppose the tape is still there a day or so later. The squatters believe that the owner is away since the door hasn't been used. This strategy has become alarmingly prominent in Dublin. The police warned people to be vigilant and remove any tape immediately after seeing it. Some of these markings are left by dog thieves, signaling that your home has a money-wise worthy breed to steal. Supposedly, red chalk marks are for large dogs, and yellow and pink marks refer to medium and small dogs. The police advise dog owners to keep their eyes open around their properties and report any such instances to the police. Lastly, pay extra attention when walking their pets. One of the keys to being safe at a house is having good security and knowing your property. For instance, if your front door locks are still responsive but function slowly, it may be a sign of a burglar attempt. This might be because of a tactic called the vulnerability method. Thieves make the door lock weaker with time. They use tools or objects to deteriorate the lock without leaving any traces. You may think your lock is old and simply postpone calling a locksmith, but that would be a huge mistake. Similarly, the key might turn inside the lock with delay. If it's harder to turn inside, this is usually the first sign of an attempted break-in. So, this is probably the most important warning sign you should take into consideration. Even security door locks are vulnerable to break-ins. Did you know that in Churchill, Canada, locals keep their car doors unlocked? They don't do this to invite the thieves, but to survive a potential polar bear attack. The town has the largest number of polar bears in the world. 
Imagine a resident faced with a polar bear and another person's car is nearby. They can quickly shelter inside that car. How about learning some safety tips to avoid purse snatching? Firstly, don't carry a shoulder bag over your shoulder. I know, I know, it's what the bag is designed for. But this makes it easier for a thief to grab your bag. For example, carrying a small clutch-type handbag underneath your arm is safer. Shopping with someone else is safer than shopping alone. On shopping days and in general, don't carry more money than you would possibly need for all your credit cards in the same purse. Carry only what you need for the day. You might think, it's just for a sec, but don't leave your purse in shopping carts or on counters. And there's the matter of scams. When you believe you can't be scammed, you might let yourself be more vulnerable to scammers. Scams target everyone from all backgrounds, ages, and incomes. They can catch you off guard and when you're not expecting it, using new technologies, products, or even services to hook you to either give them your money or personal details. How to be scam-proof? Firstly, keep in mind that if it looks too good to be true, it probably is. Secondly, don't respond to calls about your computer asking for remote access, even if they mention a well-known company. Scammers will often ask you to turn on your computer to fix a problem or install a free upgrade. This is actually a virus to get your passwords and personal details. Lastly, pay attention to unusual payment requests. Scammers will often ask you to use an unusual payment method like a preloaded debit card, gift card, or iTunes card. A carjacker and a slice of cheese. What connection can there be? Imagine you walk to your car and see melted cheese on the engine cap. You initially thought that it was probably some kind of a prank, so you begin to clean the cheese. Naturally, it takes ages under the hot sun. Pay attention to your surroundings. Someone might be watching you from a distance and waiting for the right time. They can just jump into your car and run away while you're not looking at the driver's door, busy cleaning the cheese near the passenger side. Did you know that you might have an extra key in your car? Some cars have valet keys hidden under the owner's manual or in the toolkit in the trunk. If your car has that spare pair, take it out immediately. If you know where it is, thieves will know it too. Plus, don't think you have a perfect hiding spot for your spare keys. Car thieves know where to look. Golf balls are covered in dimples rather than being perfectly round so that the ball can fly through the air more smoothly, decreasing the drag and allowing it to travel further and faster. Your makeup pads have two different sides for a reason. The bumpy side is used for applying makeup, while the flat side is for removing it. Donuts have holes so that the inside and outside cook evenly. Before the holes were added, the inside would often be greasy and doughy, while the outside was crisp. Your Apple laptop charger has tiny legs that can be folded out, and they're not there so your charger can stand up. These legs, when unfolded, allow you to wrap the cable around and then clamp it into place, securing it and preventing the cable getting tangled or damaged. Now take a look at a soda bottle, and you'll notice a disc inside the bottle cap. This helps seal in the liquid and the drink's fizz, stopping it from going flat. That hole in your hollow lollipop stick isn't to prevent choking, should it ever be swallowed. It's actually there to keep the candy in place. Excess candy flows into the hollow tube and the hole, which, when it hardens, keeps the pop in place. If it was a smooth stick, the candy would slide off easily. The zipper on leather biker jackets is often sewn diagonally. It's not just a fashion statement. Zips that are stitched vertically can bunch up if the wearer leans forward, but a diagonal zipper won't. That little triangle on your gas gauge is there to let you know which side of the car your gas cap is on. Now, you'll never pull up to the wrong side of the pump in a rental car again. Vacuums come with so many attachments, but do any of us really know what that one with long bristles is for? It's for dusting and is perfect for cleaning framed art, blinds, and lampshades. Those tiny holes in the chocolate box tray actually serve a function. Push the hole near the candy and it'll pop straight out with you having to get your hands dirty. How thoughtful! Some skyscrapers have hollow floors that can contain nothing but an elevator. It's actually a way to get around height limits. Some skyscrapers are given a limit to the number of floors they can have. Because the hollow floors are empty, they add to the height of the building and make it look more impressive without increasing the number of floors and breaking the building contract. 
These hollow floors also help to prevent the spread of fires. Women's shirt buttons are traditionally on the left for a reason. Back in the day, it was a sign of wealth, as it signified that a chambermaid had dressed you, as having the buttons on the left made it easier for them to do up the shirt. Your cuticles serve a purpose, so think before you get rid of them. The small area of skin is there to protect your nails from infection. Without it, bacteria and fungi can get in. What's the difference between a wooden hanger and a plastic one? Aside from helping keep your clothes in shape, cedar wood hangers also repel moths and bugs. If you look closely at an elevator door, you'll notice a tiny hole. This is actually a keyhole used for emergencies or for routine maintenance checks. Those random buttons dotted across your jeans are called rivets and are placed in the weakest spots of the jeans to protect them from ripping due to strain or movement. The Statue of Liberty's crown has seven points for a reason. They represent the seven seas and seven continents and were added so that she could extend her freedom to everyone on Earth. Suitcases often come with two zippers so that you can connect them with a padlock to prevent theft. Salt isn't just used for cooking. It can get rid of tough smells. Rubbing salt on your fingertips after chopping garlic should remove the smell. It also works on shoes. If you're in a hurry to get somewhere, but your phone is low on charge, switch it to airplane mode while it's plugged in. It'll charge much faster. Men's shirts have a loop on the back so that they can be hung on a hook in a dressing room or a locker room without creasing. Vaseline has a hidden purpose. It's great for removing scuffs from patent leather shoes. It'll also shine them. Trunks have an emergency latch if you ever accidentally lock yourself in, like I do. Don't ask me why. If you fumble around to locate it, all you have to do is pull on it and the trunk should open. Toasters have a secret slide in the bottom that can be removed so you can clean out all those annoying breadcrumbs. Burglaries are on the rise in your neighborhood, and you have concerns about whether your house might be vulnerable. You have no surveillance system, so tonight you're placing some foil over the front door handle before you go to bed. This will help identify if someone sneakily tries to enter while you sleep. You wake up the next morning, and it appears the foil is slightly ripped. Someone has been here, and they're sure to return. Another option is to put a mug on the doorknob. When the knob turns, the mug will fall, causing a noise to wake you up and hopefully deter the intruder. Your main concern is that a tradesman stopped by recently. He said that he was working next door and asked to use your toilet. You refused and felt bad at the time for being rude, but it was a very smart move. About 60% of burglaries in the USA are made by someone you know or have met before. That tradesman, while going to the bathroom, could have adjusted something in your house to make their return entry a little easier. They may have wanted to take a closer look at what security system is installed, check the structural integrity of your home, and found out what valuable loot you might have. Finally, today you're going on vacation. You need to prepare your house and make it as safe as possible. A full post box is the first thing a robber will look for in a target. Your neighbor will need to take your mail while you're away. A well-manicured property is a clear sign that you are always there. You've always kept your lawn mown and hedges trimmed, so you will need to arrange for someone to do this while you're away. If it was winter, any untouched snow around your house would also make it a target. Having a neighbor make pretend footprints that show recent activity will also provide a deterrent. There are many types of hedges that act as a great first defense. Luckily, you have sharp-leaved shrubs along your fences. If someone jumps into your property and lands on a sharp or spiky bush, they will immediately cry out in discomfort. This will alert your neighbors of an intruder. And the foliage will also catch fragments of clothing that could be used as evidence later. In preparation for your trip the week before, you opened and closed your curtains at random times throughout the day. 
You made sure there were no clear patterns, so it won't matter if they're left open while you're away, just in case someone was scouting your property. Burglars spend several days walking or driving through neighborhoods, identifying the behaviors of each house. One thing they don't really like is a neighborhood watch. Criminals do their research before they start scouting and will avoid these areas. Something for you to organize when you get back. Now, move all your expensive electronics away from the windows so there's nothing of value in clear view. Put them inside a cupboard or a concealed room. Don't worry about TVs. They're too large and take effort to move. The criminals are more interested in the smaller devices, like an iPad and gaming devices. Put your small expensive items, like jewelry, in boxes and hide them away in a secret location. Surprisingly, a kid's room is a good spot. Burglars have admitted to never going into them, as there's nothing of value in toys. Take photos of all the serial numbers on your electronic devices and create an inventory for insurance purposes. 95% of break-ins are done by force, so it's time to reinforce your windows and doors. You can make it even more difficult for the crooks. Remove all stools, chairs, and ladders in the backyard and put them into your garage. Otherwise, they will help provide easier access points to higher entrances, like the air conditioner box. This is one of their favorites. Without a way to reinforce it, it's easy to tear off and creates an entrance. Don't make it easier for them with a step up. Burglars can break down a weak door within one minute. Install a metal frame instead of wood for more support. The hinges and lock should have adequate strength to withstand being kicked long enough until they give up. With the lock as the remaining weak spot, this can easily be picked by an experienced thief. A simple protection lock that holds it in place will make sure it won't budge. The hinges on your garage door swing outwards, which makes it vulnerable and can be accessed by taking the pins out of the hinges. Replace them with tamper-proof pins so they can't be removed. And lastly, the garage overhead door is one of the first places a burglar looks to access. They don't have a lock that fully secures them. Attach a padlock on the latch connecting it to the track, holding it in place. Your garage door doesn't have this option, so drill a hole in the track just above one of the rollers and attach a padlock. Robbers are scared of dogs, the territorial and loyal guardians of the house. A survey found that most houses burgled didn't have dogs because thieves don't want to draw attention during a heist. Unfortunately, you don't own one, but just placing a dog bowl outside the front door will discourage them. The burglars have adapted their craft with technology. Four out of five criminals use social media, like Facebook, Twitter, and Google Maps to find their targets. Even sharing a photo with a house key in it is enough for a burglar to create their own key by zooming in and taking the exact measurements. Make sure your wireless network is secure and use a new, much stronger password while away. You're not only vulnerable to physical objects being stolen. Valuable data like passwords and access codes can be taken through your network. And there's also the threat of infecting devices through malicious malware. You can also remove the vision of your house completely from Google Maps. Type in your home address find the street view of your residence, press the Options button, and select Report a Problem. You'll be taken to a screen with an image of your home, with the option to move a red square to cover your property. Request it to be blurred under the option My Home, and enter your exact address. It will only take a couple of days to be processed. Don't leave the radio on while away it won't help. Through the burglar's method of scouting houses, they take note of radio and TV sounds. When they return, they check if they're still on, which just makes it easier to confirm that no one's home. 
An alternative option to show active presence at home is by making your own audio, something that plays ambient noises randomly throughout the day with footsteps, conversations, and a dog barking. Leaving your lights on is also not a good idea. Someone spying will notice your house easier, especially at night, and you'll be further robbed on your electricity bill. You're just about ready to leave on your vacation and need to take the trash out. If you have some large boxes, break them down so they can fit inside the bin. Hide any clues about what valuables you recently received. Last check, all the doors are locked and no windows are left open. Now you can finally enjoy your trip. But as you enjoy yourself in your picturesque location, leave any snaps on your phone while you're over there and post them online only when you return. If you do share your photos while you're away, it will have made all your preparations pointless. Every criminal in the area will know you're not home. But with 2.5 million houses burgled annually in the USA, a house without a modern security system is 300% more likely to be broken into. When you get back from your break, it will be a great idea to install one.